On this week's show, we visit Wabakimi Canoe Outfitters and Eco Lodge in the Superior Country region of Ontario, and we're looking forward to a fantastic fly-in and train-out backwoods adventure, complete with walleye, pike, lake trout, and some great times. Hey, I've been fishing in Ontario for well over 40 years and have some great fishing memories, not to mention some very close friends. Ontario has some of the best multi-species freshwater fishing in the world. Ontario has a special place in my heart. The Ontario Experience captures all of this and more as hosts Troy Linder and Ty Shadeen explore new places, meet some authentic characters, and experience world-class fishing and hunting along the way. The Ontario Experience is the next best thing to going on the adventure yourself, and who knows, this unique show just might give you some ideas for your next fishing or hunting trip. The drive into Armstrong, Ontario, just a couple hours north of Thunder Bay, was easy and gorgeous. Gotta say, I was really excited to meet the crew, spend some time at the Wabakimi Bed and Breakfast, and then take off on our adventure even further north into a remote outpost via float plane. The lodge and rooms were very accommodating and made for the perfect place to meet everyone and even enjoy a meal before our departure. With lots to admire from room decor to the fresh homemade cooking to the pieces of history and art on the walls and of course lots of great conversation. It wasn't long before the plane taxied in, we got our gear stowed, and we were on our way. Last night we drove into Armstrong, which is just a couple hours north of Thunder Bay. We stayed at Wabakimi B&B, which is fantastic up there in Armstrong. And we just flew in this morning here. This is Schwanabis Lake. We're unloading behind us here. We got an exciting adventure here of great fishing, fun with Bruce and his family. Having arrived at our destination, Schwanabis Lake in Northern Ontario, I was amped for what I heard about the many things to do here. Not only there's some truly great multi-species fishing, but rest and relaxation, blueberry picking, swimming, and lots of birds and mammals to observe. Of course, I was stoked about this afternoon's plan to target walleyes and pike, and I couldn't get my rods assembled fast enough. This unique outpost, you have a lot of family history here at this location. Yeah, that is definitely the case. My dad moved to this lake in 1976 from Connecticut and started his canoe outfitting and fishing business and has been running trips in the park and fishing these lakes ever since. Started his, his new life in Northern Ontario um, and lived in a teepee and then lived in a log cabin. So he's been, he's been fishing this lake since long before I was born, pulling, pulling big walleye and big pike and big lake trout out. So. What's your earliest memory here? Oh. Goodness, I'd probably be four or five, lots of time hanging out on the sand beach and swimming and out in the boat, catching walleye, yeah, it goes way back. Now relative to, uh, to Wabakimi Provincial Park, where are we located? So we're just at the southern border of the park, uh, just south of the train line. Uh, we're, you know, more than 20 miles from the nearest road, so we're, okay. we're a ways out here. That's nice. It uh, does cut down on the competition, you could yeah. say. Yeah, I haven't heard too many boats coming by. This is the only location on this lake, right? Yeah, we are the only ones on this lake for sure. So this lake, so what, I guess, what are the, the fish we can expect to catch out here? Well, it's a pretty good walleye lake for sure. We're gonna go check out uh, one of the rapids that flows into the lake, pretty good walleye honey hole. Um, and then we're gonna have a few folks try and search out some lake trout, 
Try oh, and nice. hit up some of the deep spots. Yeah, it's a bright sunny day, so hopefully we can find them down in yeah. the deeps. And maybe even we'll dig up a big pike or two. Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. After traveling, I was definitely ready to hit the rapids with Michael for some walleye. And with one pull of the outboard, we were off. There we go. Oh, yeah. It's a little one, but that's a nice little. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Let's get a look at you. Good one. Couple of pounder. Yeah. Nice dark color to him. Go. Excellent. There. Nice. There's a. Looks like you might be a little happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good size one. I think. Bad news for this one. We might have to. Might have to hang on to this one. We're going to hang on to this one. Hell yeah. Pretty colors. Yeah, they are awfully pretty fish. Yeah, the dark. It's that dark back and the gold. Ontario gold. Oh, yeah. This segment is brought to you by Tourism Northern Ontario. Where's your bucket list, you know, in the park? Is there anything, like you've explored the park so much, are there, are there parts of the park that you'd like to see or so, like, a, like some sort of special trip that you'd like to do? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch. It's, there's a couple of whitewater rivers that I'd like to paddle that I haven't paddled. Yeah. I'd like to do the full length of the Albany. Okay. Um, How long is that? Depends, it's like probably a three week trip. Okay. Oh, just a little, buddy. Yeah. Right attitude, wrong side. <laughs> so a three-week trip. Yeah, y'all you could probably do it in about three weeks, yeah. We okay. did uh, a section of it last summer. Yeah. But uh, we, like, paddled in from, like, a tributary. Didn't come right from the headwaters. Yeah. But you can do it, like, right from Pickle Lake, basically. Okay. Um, which I'd like to do. The Winesk is another one that would be sweet to do. Flows Which into one? The Winesk? Winesk. Flows okay. into, into Hudson's Bay. Okay. Do you have any crazy stories from your trips, from your, like just any in, in, interesting encounters with some creatures of the wilderness? I mean, I, I love seeing caribou. Yeah. Seeing caribou is always real special. They, uh, yeah, they're just like, so kind of like elegant and elusive. Yeah. You, know, you see a moose, you're like, oh, that's sweet. But you see a caribou, you're like, whoa. So they're about 500 in the park or so? About that, yeah. Okay. I imagine Bruce mentioned his, his master's thesis to you. Yeah, uh, no. No, he, no. He did uh, his master's thesis on the effects of roads and logging on woodland caribou in what at the time was not Wabakimi Park, but what is now Wabakimi Park. Huh. And then his research helped to prove that there was a need to protect them. Wow. Because otherwise, there was big plans to log all of this. How are they different, you know, just visually, the feeling of when you see one compared to an elk or a moose? Um, they're a lot more elusive. Like, you can just kind of feel it. You know, like an elk, you can, like, walk up and pat it on the back. And yeah. a moose, not quite as much, but close. Yeah. But caribou, like, if you see a caribou, it's because you've been quiet for hours and you're, like, Huh. You know, checking out the downwind sides of the islands and, huh. um, and it depends on the season as well. Like, in late in the season, the caribou really start to disappear. They do. Um, where do they go or what's there? They're just hiding deeper. Okay. Deeper in the forest. Whereas earlier in the season, uh, you, you see them out on the water more so. Yeah. And they mate on the islands in the, the springtime before the ice goes out. Okay. Which is a, a big time that people see them. Bruce has got uh, all kinds of photos from his... These masters. Huh. 
he collared, I don't remember how many it was, but he collared, you know, like dozens and dozens of caribou and then monitored them from the air for a couple of years. Wow. Huge project. Oh my gosh. That's More of like a PhD style project than a yeah. master's project. Jeez. I say that's got to be quite a, <laughs> a lot of time and in, in, in the, in the, just the time spent with that, just learning and understanding totally. caribou and then understanding the, um, rock here and just understanding this area of Canada and, and where they go or what they would do and yeah definitely big learning curve with those guys this segment is brought to you by go fish Ontario Canada what a great day on the water with Michael and the stringer to show for it. Exactly the main ingredient a premium northern shore lunch requires, fresh walleye. Add in a little bit of their secret breading and some hot oil. I gotta say, it was a meal to remember. Something you just can't replicate at home or at any restaurant for that matter. Yes, we were all smiles well into the evening and finally ready for some sleep before another early morning on the water. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but not a clinic. <laughs> Oh, a little pike. Yeah. Yeah, then I marked, oh, I marked, um, marked something down there. It's so quiet, just, pike are fun, even when they're, you know, when they're this size, just on a nice little spinning rod. They are fun to catch. And they get, you know, the, the pike in here have been, uh, I think, up to 40 pounds. I think there've been 30 to 40 pound pike caught out of this, Absolutely. out of this lake, and this is just, you know, this is just a little guy, but they get monstrous here. There you go. <laughs> He's moving like a pike. Oh, it's a walleye. Yeah, decent sized walleye. Yeah, it is. Come on back up there, buddy. Yeah. He's rolling around. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Woo! Very nice. We don't need nets. <laughs> Men. <laughs> there. Look at that. Nice. He'll taste real good. Whoa. That's a little bit more what we're looking for. We got some pike in this spot, and that's a that's the nice uh, eater walleyes that you like here. Hey, did you know that Wabakimi Wilderness Park offers a lot more than just fishing? While it boasts some of the best walleye, northern pike, lake trout, speckled trout, and other fishing, it also offers 2,000 kilometers of lake and river canoeing routes with some excellent white water. Canoeists in a park should be experienced, but have the choice of selecting trips that are calm and relaxing or offer more of an adventure. Park staff and local outfitters are more than happy to discuss your trip plans with you and help you select the route that suits you best. With over 500 backcountry campsites at Wabakimi, it's not difficult to create an adventure. The park also features some beautiful beaches, making for a relaxing swim after a long day of paddling. Wabakimi is also a bird watcher's paradise and offers opportunities to see species such as the boreal chickadee, red and white winged crossbill, greater yellow legs, spruce grouse, hawk owl, 
great gray owl, and pine grosbeak. Bald eagles abound, and gray jays also follow you throughout your trip. Besides fishing, canoeing, swimming, and bird watching, hunting is also permitted in the expanded Wabakimi Wilderness Park area for moose and it's guided by tourist outfitters who can help you organize the trip of a lifetime. Besides great fishing, Wabakimi offers unparalleled rest and relaxation for visitors with surroundings that are absolutely breathtaking. The meals are superb, tasty, and filling. Exactly the fuel to keep you fishing, nature watching, or simply lounging in the comfy backwoods cabins. And then there's the swimming. With awesome clear and clean water and sandy beaches, a great way to rid yourself of life's many stresses or shower up before another shore lunch. Have to say, hanging out on the beach with Michael and his family was pretty fun and a great way to relax a bit in between catching fish. A little more getting to know each other through a few fish stories, a little campfire, a cold beverage or two, and Michael even broke out his acoustic for a little bluesy slide guitar. Definitely a treat. Like their name suggests, Wabakimi Canoe Outfitters and Eco Lodge also facilitate some incredible canoe and kayak trips through the park and can customize the trip to match exactly what you're looking for, even if it's flame broiled lake trout. Nice. Just about time to to head in today, and we had a pretty uh, pretty big pretty big day. Had the morning fishing. Had a great oh yeah, nice eater. There's just about time to to head in. One last one last walleye here. We've had a fantastic trip. We might get out in the morning for an hour or two before we take the train. Flew in, taking the train out. Uh, hit up the sandy beach today, had a great breakfast of walleye and potato potato cakes, we call them hash browns, potato cakes up here, and a, a great dinner, just some, some fantastic uh, some fantastic fishing and times here with Bruce, Bob, and his family here. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, me and Michael here just about to head in here, and I think this one's going to go in the box. I think we're going to be eating this one tomorrow morning. Uh, it's good fish you got there, Troy. It's been a, been a lovely time having you here, and we're happy to see you back anytime. To say I had anything less than a wonderful time at Wabakimi would be unfair. Memories of the fishing, surroundings, and new friends will definitely remain with me. From the bed and breakfast to the fly-in to the remote adventure, this is definitely something I'd love to do again. 
And then there's this bonus too, and that's taking the train out. A new experience for this angler, but definitely pretty cool, and harkens back to the early days of angler adventures exploring this region. And so I was back on the road home again with Bruce, Bob, Michael, and his family with lots to talk about and remember. Definitely lots of smiles and laughs on our way back to the bed and breakfast and interspersed by some amazing scenery out the windows of the moving train. Back at the lodge, I wasn't surprised at all to find a host of other anglers ready to depart on their own backwoods adventures. And with that, I wish them all the success and fun we had in our trip to Schwanabas Lake in gorgeous Wabakimi Wilderness Park.